Bismillahir Rahim. At the time when the ulama had reached the peak of knowledge, was hadith and fiqh and usul and the rest of the sciences, and a person may have thought that everything which could have been written has been written, and that perhaps we would never see that caliber of ulama again. But Allah did not leave this ummah in the dark without ulama that could guide it. So although the time of the Salaf had ended, and it was now the year 333 after Hijrah, once again the city of Samarkand brought forth a gem. This person was Imam Nasr ibn Muhammad ibn Ahmad ibn Ibrahim al-Samarqandi, but we know him better as Faqih Abu Layth al-Samarqandi rahimahullah. Imam Abu Layth al-Samarqandi rahimahullah is one of those ulama that are uniquely special. He belonged to that special small group of ulama that lived a short life in this world, but yet left behind a great amount of work which they are remembered by. It is because of the short life of Imam Abu Layth as samarqandi rahimahullah that there isn't all that much written regarding his biography. But if there's one thing that stands tall through it all, it is the fact that there is absolute love and respect for Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah in the hearts of the ulama. Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah lived at the time when there were many great ulama around and he had studied under a huge amount of them himself. But before even coming to them, Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah's own father was an imam as well. His name was Imam Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Tawwazi and it was under him that Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah began his studies. After studying under his father, Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah turned to the ulama of Samarqand and because Samarqand was such a hotbed of Islamic activity, as a result there was no shortage of dini knowledge and great ulama to be found therein. Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah studied under the famous ulama that were there at the time, those like Imam Muhammad ibn al-Fadl al-Bukhari, Imam Muhammad ibn al-Fadl al-Balkhi, Imam al-Khalil ibn Ahmad al-Qadi rahimahumullah and many others, but there were none that were quite as famous as Imam Abu Ja'far al-Hindawani rahimahullah. Imam al-Hindawani rahimahullah thus became the main teacher of Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah and it was under Imam al-Hindawani that Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah completed his studies. Many people get the wrong idea when they think about studies in the past, when they assume that it was simply a course being done and you could just turn up when you wanted and stay out when you wanted and you just get a certificate at the end. That is so far removed from how knowledge was sought in the days of old. Firstly, a person under the age of 20 would generally be still deemed as a student and a person would only be allowed to teach others if he was given permission to do so by his teachers and the ulama of the time. It wasn't just everybody going about doing his own thing as he sees fit. So it was only the very rare few that would get that recognition at a young age. And this a person can get an idea of from the word sheikh. Because the word Sheikh literally means an old man. So it was due to long years of study that a person would eventually be deemed as being competent to teach others and to give fatwa. Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah found himself in the category of those select and special few because his knowledge was so untouchable and his piety so unbelievable that it earned him amongst the ulama the title of Imam al Huda, the leader of guidance. When the ulama speak of Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah, then they simply overflow with praises for him, and not one of those praises are an exaggeration. They refer to Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah firstly as a faqih, but he was also a mufassir, he was a muhaddith, but he was also a zahid and an imam of tasawwuf as well. When speaking of being a faqih, then Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah's knowledge contained within his books of fiqh speaks for itself. Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah wrote a primer of fiqh which he named Al-Muqaddimah. He also wrote an explanation of Imam Muhammad ibn al-Hassan al-Shaybani rahimahullah's kitab which is known as Al-Jami'u al saghir Besides these two, Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah had written about half a dozen, half a dozen other kitabs just on fiqh and fatawa. When a person speaks of tafsir, then who doesn't know the famous tafsir of Imam al-Samarqandi rahimahullah, which is known as Tafsir al-Samarqandi, but it is better known as Bahrul Ulum. Bahrul Ulum translates as the ocean of knowledge, but this knowledge is not used in the singular form as ilm, as in Bahrul Ilm, rather it is in the plural form as Ulum, because of the sheer amount of knowledge of the sciences of the deen that is contained within this one kitab of tafsir.
When a person talks of zuhud and tasawwuf, then in this field, Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah wrote a kitab titled Bustan al-Arifin, the orchard of those that have the ma'rifah, that recognition of Allah. This is besides the absolute piety and humility that Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah had from a young age. But probably the most famous kitab of Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah is his one known as Tanbih al-Ghafilin bi ahadith Sayyid al-Anbiya wal Mursaleen, but which is often simply called Tanbih al-Ghafilin for short, which means an admonition of the neglectful. This kitab is based on a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam together with, in- with incidents that had occurred in the time of the Salaf, as well as stories that serve to wake the negligent people that are neglectful of, Al- of Allah and the deen of Allah. Now you may think from the many works of Imam Abu Layth at Samarqandi rahimahullah that he was some old man who lived to a ripe old age to have done all this and written many books. But the reality is that Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah passed away before he reached the age of 40 years old, in the year 373 after Hijrah. Some ulama differ regarding the date of birth and the date of passing of Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah, with some ulama saying that he was born after 333 and passed away in the year 375. With some ulama going as far as to say that he passed away when he was only 38 years old. But at the end of the day, whether a person says 38, 39 or even 40 years old, it is still a short space of time. In so short a life, Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah left behind such an inheritance of knowledge that a person can understand why they had reached such high ranks in the court of Allah. And Imam Abu Layth rahimahullah, after passing away with this short life, he was buried in Balkh where he had spent the remainder ending part of his life. May Allah not make us from amongst the ghafilin, and let us be from those that live our lives in a state of wakefulness to the deen. And may Allah grant us his ma'rifah, because that is the sum total of what our lives should be to gain that recognition of Allah. Ameen ya rabbil alameen, wa akhiru da'wana, anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.